Good evening, I am Mr. Ish. We are looking here at a very essential video, log AX. In terms of derivative, it is 1 or x ln A. Frequently, this specific derivation or this proof is not commonly shown, but in this video, we will do that. Think about what you know in terms of natural logs and in terms of exponential bases. e to the AX in terms of its derivative is AE to the AX. These are templates that we've seen in terms of derivation and in terms of what you know. We know d or dx ln x is equal to 1 over x. This ideally is an absolute value because you don't do a natural log of a negative number. You know d or dx power function bx, which is sometimes also a to the x, it's either synonymous, is always equal to bx ln b, or you could have said ax ln a. And then lastly, this one right here, which we have on the very top, log base ax is equal to 1 over x ln a. This here, not commonly shown, but important to know the derivation of this. It very well mimics this one over here. What can you do about this in terms of helping you along with the proper derivation or the proof of this? It is this. Think about the change of base of logs formula. Log a x is synonymous as ln x or ln a. That's exactly what it is, the change of base of logs. If you're doing the derivative of this, you might as well be looking at the derivative of that. So when you're looking at the derivative of this, you're really looking at the derivative of this ln x or ln a. Very easily, without thinking about derivation, without thinking about proving, this is no different than you looking at 1 or ln a, a coefficient that has been pushed outside your derivative, and then you're looking at the derivative of ln x, which following that scheme or there, you have 1 or ln a times 1 or x. Combine these and you know you'll get that. You can think of everything in that way, but we have to actually show you how this is proved and that is the goal for this. In this video, you follow a very similar format as you did for the proof of the natural log x. Except if you saw that video of mine, you saw there's a branch point in which we could have taken two routes and I took one route and I didn't take the other route. In this, I'll take the route two I did not take in the other video, the Le Hopital's route of derivation procedure and then we will get that type of perspective utilizing this. If you've seen that video, you know what I'm talking about. There was a branch point where we could have done two ways. I did only one way and I only talked about the other way. I never actually did it. We will do that other way utilizing this. I've already said now our function is similar to this. Log AX is similar to us looking at ln x or ln a. I've already said that. So we can either do the derivation using this or using this. We'll do it this because that's a smarter way of doing it. If this right here is my function, we're using the basic definition of derivative limit as h approach which is 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. You utilize and put everything over here in that template. This right here is a coefficient which you put outside of your entire derivation scheme. Then you do your limit as h approaches 0. Then you start filling up this template with what you have ln x ln x plus h minus ln x. Now you're beginning to see it doesn't look all too unfamiliar, even though we've never looked at it formally, but it doesn't look unfamiliar because we've converted log ax into a natural log and we know how to do that. But we still have to carry this through 1 over ln a. We have limit as h approaches 0, right? Use the properties of logs. When you're doing a difference of logs with a common natural log, you can look at them in terms of their quotient. Natural log x plus h over x all over h, right? This x plus h over x is no different than 1 plus h over x. That can simplify to that and we will do that exactly and let's do that. 1 over ln a, we have limit as h approaches 0, we have natural log 1 plus h over x, right, all over h. Now, let's talk about that procedure which I was verbalizing. You can utilize the Le Hopital's rule procedure and a variety of assumptions which we've done already in a previous video. If you look at the derivation video which I've po posted out for this ln ax, I've talked about a derivation or an assumption we could use to help us through this. If you know that, you know this, and you can utilize it for your proof over here. So if you look at the video, which I will add a tag onto in the information section for this video, it very well will complement what we're showing you here in this video. If you were to put the zero in place of h, 
on this side you'll get 1 plus 0 over x over 0 and then you have a natural log sitting out right here you'll get natural log of 1 over 0 you'll get 0 over 0 which is an indeterminate limit form and for which you have to then employ the Le Hopital's rule of derivative procedure you'll use the Le Hopital's rule in the numerator you'll do the derivative of what you see with regards to h variable and you'll do the same here with what you see here in the denominator the h variable you still have this 1 over l and a sitting outside when you're doing this, you have to use a chain rule. If u is equal to 1 plus h over x, then function with regards to u is l n u. We'll do d or d u, l n u, and then d u over d h, because everything is with respect to h. The derivative of 1 plus h over x, 1 is a 0, h over x is just 1 over x. If you're doing the derivative of h over x with respect to h, right, it's really you looking at 1 over x times the derivative of h, which goes away and you're left with 1 over x. So you have to bring that into mind when you actually do that, all right? Over the derivative of this h, d over dh, h. Now everything will come very seamlessly into play. If anything seems confusing, you can always rewind and rewatch this part. It's a chain rule over here. We have one over ln a sitting outside. Let's keep it sitting outside. Derivative of ln u is one over u. Derivative of 1 plus h over x, as I've told you, is just 1 over x, right? 1 over x. Derivative of h is just a 1. In this part, you could literally put 0 and test it out. If the indeterminate limit form 0 over 0 still exists, you would do another round of Le Hopital's rule procedure, but it won't exist because we still have to substitute this u and we'll find out what happens. 1 over ln a, you'll have 1 over u. u was everything right here, 1 plus h over x. It was 1 over 1 plus h over x. This right here is my 1 over u factor coming right over here, times 1 over x. This over 1 is meaningless. You can put 0 in here. If you put 0 here in place of h, you'll get 1 over 1 plus 0, because 0 over x is 0. This will 0 out. You'll have 1 over 1, which is just a 1. You'll be left with nothing but this 1 over x, which you'll happily move right outside and attach with that. You'll get 1 over x times 1 over l and a and you know you get 1 over x l and a which is exactly what we wanted right over here and you see it so the derivation procedure has been completed it's not hard and it very well relies on the procedures i've shown in that previous natural log derivation video which was posted not too long ago and you can watch that and it will very well complement what you have seen over here but remember this proof over here involved using the change of base of log formula to convert this into this then this right here is a part which feeds into your derivation procedure to give you what you see over there and with that i say thank you for watching have a nice day stay tuned there are many important videos on the way